All right, here we're unboxing a gift from my buddy James Mayberry and Callie. Let's see what's inside here. So busted up bows. <laughs> Dude, that thing is busted up. Good lord. And a whole lot left to it. Well, we're going to take it apart and we're going to check out the guts and see what's inside this monster Bows unit from the. See, this is a CD3000, so this one's from the late 90s. Wow, she is beat up. He said he said it was, but the only purpose of this was to check out that waveguide system on the inside and see what it's all about. What's up, guys? Big D Wiz, old school stereo.com. Today we're going to check out what's inside the Bose CD3000, also known as the Acoustic Wave Music System, version about three. So you can see here the exterior, and my buddy James Mayberry sent me this so we could look inside and see what it's all about. Now you could get these with a carrying case, I'll show one here, and I'll also show a fully functional newer version, which is called the Acoustic Wave Music System 2. This is kind of how it looks, how it works. It's got the display on the top, a few buttons here and there for changing modes and tracks. And here's the CD mechanism on the top. Pretty basic, not a whole lot to it. So what I wanted to do is get one of these and I wanted to pry it open and see what it's all about. So my buddy James sent this one to me. He had it sitting in his garage and it got really beat up. So uh, we decided that we just take it apart here for you guys and show you what it's all about on the inside. You can see here, this is the mids and highs speakers and the main circuit board is on the same panel with the mids and highs speakers. And it was really stuck in there once I got all the screws out. I actually had to pry it pretty hard to get it out. And you'll see in a minute how beat up it was. Check out the inside. <laughs> it's got a lot of rust, um, a lot of hair, uh, a lot of dust, a lot of um, just nastiness here on the inside. And I would venture to say that this board is probably no good. So I don't feel so bad about taking this thing apart. So here on the same panel with the mids and high speakers, you can see we've got couple little daughter board panels. One of them houses the LCD screen. The other one just has a few buttons for track, forward, skip, reverse, things like that. Um, and in the very center is the little CD mechanism and very basic, not a whole lot to it. You can see here all the different components and just pry it off of the um, little mids and high board. You can see there's a um, some cabling that goes in between the daughter boards to the motherboard. And again, not much going on here. And at the bottom, this is where the amplifier resides. And there's a nice large power transformer there. This is AC power only unless you have an additional adapter that actually lets you use some D batteries. I don't have that adapter to show you. But on this side is the four inch subwoofer, which is in the waveguide. And I'm going to pry that open in a few minutes and show you. But first, I wanted to show you the amplifier. All right, so now we'll cut this small plastic zip tie and pull out the cabling, which goes up to the main circuit board. And we'll take a look at this module here. We'll unplug the speaker connector for the subwoofer. Subwoofer, it's funny to say that for a four inch speaker. But uh, we'll take a look here at the amplifier and the power transformer board. You can see here there's one capacitor, 15,000 microfarad, 25 volts. And we'll take a closer look at the two chips that are used for the amplifier here in a second. But here's the large power transformer. It's billion. That's not how much it costs, but who knows. So again, uh, we'll unplug the power transformer so I can get a better look at the board here. And so we can check out these chips and see what these are rated at wattage wise. Okay, so one of the chips is a TDA7375A. When I look at the spec sheet online, it says it's two by 26 watts at four ohms, 14.4 volts, one kilohertz, 10% THD. The other chip is a TDA7396, 
And this is the mono one for the four inch sub, 45 watts at two ohms, 14.4 volts, 10% distortion. So it gives you an idea of the power that this amplifier um, puts out for the Bose Acoustic Wave music system. So next we'll pull out the four inch driver. Uh, there's three screws that hold it in. Now this driver looks a lot like the same one that's used in the Bose 901s. And there's a lot of the other Bose speakers that use this four inch driver. So I actually looked up the model number on the back, the 108515 and it appears that it was very similar to the one in the 901 and also some of the other Bose speakers, but the ones in the 901 are rated at one ohm, and I'm gonna check the uh, ohm load on this one in a minute, but first I wanted to kind of measure, give you guys an idea of what the cone uh, width was or diameter. And you can see about 88 millimeters or about three and a half inches. That's without the surround, that's just the cone itself. So then we um, expanded it out here and we're gonna get it all the way from the surround edge all the way to the other part of the surround edge and about 100 millimeters or four inches. So not a four and a half inch, this is actually a four inch driver. And so next what we decided to do is let's check the impedance and, or the resistance and find out you know, what ohm load this joker has and about two ohms or so. So next I did a Google search of the model 108515 for Bose and I found out FS is rated at 96.2 Hertz and it actually shows up as a one ohm driver. So maybe they just have multiple different versions of the uh, four inch driver, the 108515. Here is the module for the mids and highs. You can see they have nice acoustic foam in there to keep them, you know, keep the thing from rattling. And here is the approximately two inch or so mid and high driver. You can see it's got a built-in grill. This one's sort of a mesh style. So I decided to go ahead and pull one of them off just so that we could get a better look at the driver. Now this driver is designed to cover the mid range and the high range. So there's no tweeter, no separate tweeter in the system. So again, we get out our nice little dial caliper here to measure get about 64 and a half millimeters or 2.75 inches for the cone itself. Then we're gonna check it all the way out to the surround, to the surround edge. We get about 71 millimeters or about three inches, including the uh, surround. So it's so about a three inch driver is probably what they would consider it. So we, again, we check the, um, the impedance on it and we got around 11 ohms, which is kind of an odd load um, and I'm not sure why they decided to use 11 ohm instead of eight ohm or four ohm. But uh, anyway, so here is all of the different components of the acoustic wave music system. You can see it's not a whole lot going on here. Um, so motherboard, daughter board, speakers. But the big part about this is the acoustic um, folded horn design for that four inch driver. You can see this was made in 03. So I was a little bit off in the estimate of the year this was made. The CD3000 was made up until about 2005, and then they made the newer version, the other one that I showed you, the Acoustic Wave Music System 2. So what I was gonna do here is use my nice little saw here and kinda give you guys a cutout to show you what it looks like on the inside. Now, you'll see here in a minute, I'm a big dummy, and yes, insert comment from Fred Sanford. You big dummy. Uh, I didn't really need to do this, and you'll see why in a minute. So I'm just, you know, sitting here trying to cut through it, I'm about to kill myself, cut my finger off, all that good stuff. And I'll find out real shortly that really what I need to do is just pry the back panel off and pry the front panel off and you can see everything. So you know how it is sometimes when you're doing stuff you don't never done before, you just have to do some trial and error, and that's what I did. So the glue on here, I don't know if this glue is made in China or what, but man, it was really tight. It was hard to get it off. So you can see this is the back part of the waveguide system. And so the way it works is the four inch driver has two different ports. One of them is extremely long. The other one's much shorter. The one on the right side is the long port. And I'll show you that better here once I use my rubber mallet and smack, get the front panel off here. I didn't really want to break it, even though I'm not going to use this again. I kind of want to keep all these components so they look pretty nice, you know, so I could show it off to people and show them what it looks like. 
So other than the spider webs inside, I cleaned those out. Um, you can see the four inch driver here uh, is up facing in the cabinet. That's how it works. And then you can see the waveguide system. It goes up and it also goes back. So there's two different uh, waveguides, one for the right side, one for the left. So what I did is I got out my tape measure. There was nothing real scientific about this. I just wanted to kind of find out how long each waveguide was. So here is the results, about 59 inches or 150 centimeters for the right side waveguide. On the left side, we got about 18 inches or 46 centimeters. So again, here's the cutout that shows you what it looks like. Pretty cool if you ask me. Here again is a breakdown of all the different components of the Acoustic Wave music system. I appreciate you guys watching. Hope you enjoyed this teardown. I do have plans in future videos to go over the acoustic wave music system, talk about all the different versions that have come out, including the Japanese specific models, which we never saw in the US, and just talk about kind of the history of Bose, because it's actually pretty cool when I did some research. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Appreciate you watching. This is Big D Wiz, OldSchoolStereo.com. Until next time, I'm out of here.